Hi guys, Solazar here. This is the first of what I hope to be many episodes in which we're going to talk about several home, uh, smart home projects and initiatives to help make our homes a little easier place to live. This particular episode, what we're going to talk about is a changing out from a standard contactor on a four-ton carrier HVAC to an Emerson Sure Start, um, or Sure Switch, excuse me, Sure Switch. And what the purpose of this is, is that the Sure Switch has several functions that enable it to better protect your, your air conditioning compressor from brownouts, low voltage, and uh, ants and insects that may uh, get inside the contactor and, 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 and inhibit its use. So we're going to take you through the dismantling of an existing contactor, replacing the Sure Switch in the new HVAC restarting and we're going to call out along the way several wiring thing wiring specifics that others may have actually had difficulty with so stay tuned and see more coming up Okay, so here's our work area where we're going to be replacing the contactor. I encourage everyone before you start this kind of work to take some photographs of your wiring just in case you have to go back to original wiring schemes. It's important to do this so that you understand exactly what you had wired up before you begin. Always a good safety measure in that respect. This is my carrier 4-ton unit and the specs associated with it that we'll be working on today. This is the wiring for my four ton carrier unit. It's important that you study this diagram for your respective unit and apply it to the Emerson switch. Safety first, always pull the, the fuse and give the capacitor time to de-energize approximately two minutes. And if you don't have time for that, take a screwdriver and go across the lead so that you can properly ensure that it's de-energized because you can get a significant shock from them. Okay, now we remove the thermostat leads that control the contactor that come from your thermostat. We remove the compressor connections here at the top, as you see, including the jumpers that go to the common on the capacitor, as well as the run lead for the fan. Once you get these top leads removed, and they can be difficult sometimes, so you have to, might have to use a nut driver, we're going to remove the bottom... L1 and L2 power leads and all the connections to the capacitors including the fan run connections. Then we're going to start the mounting process. Next we take the mounting plate for the Emerson Sure Switch. We find a location. Make sure it's going to fit in there and it's not going to be obstructed. And then once we find it we kind of mark a little spot for it and then we take the machine screws and screw it into your backing plate. Look at the bolt patterns and find machine screws in order to mount it and screw it into your backing plate. Next we strip wire about a half inch so that they can make good contact with the Emerson Sure Switch. This is where you want to take some good solid time and map out the wiring exactly where it needs to go so that you know precisely which leads need to be plugged into what locations on the the Emerson Sure switch. As you can see here the yellow wire is coming off the run side of my compressor and the black wire from my compressor is on the common side which will be attached to the C lead on the Emerson switch. Okay, next we got to attach our power lines and they each go into the L1 and L2 sections of the Emerson Sure Switch. Then next we're going to attach the 24 volt connectors from the thermostat that control it. In my case it just happened to be what I grabbed next. Followed closely behind the fan connector, which will go onto the common side, and then from the capacitor. Great. Now that we got all the wires connected, it's just mounting them 
onto the mounting bracket and screwing it down. Pretty simple stuff. And in my case, I forgot to attach the capacitor run and the fan run wiring. And double check all your wiring to make sure you got them all picked up and they're actually in place. You've double checked your wiring, so now you can reinsert your fuse. Okay, at this point, I've got this frame going at about 4x nor than normal. The green light will flash at a more slower, steady rate than what's depicted here on the screen. But the point here is to really make sure that, and emphasize that it takes about three minutes from the call of service before this actually kicks on. This is important because it's natural. You just applied power back to the unit, and one of the safety mechanisms that it has is a, is a delay start so that it actually ensures that you've got a good power voltage. So it, it's, it's acting correctly and it's working the way it's supposed to, so just be patient before it actually kicks on. If you've got the green light, then you've got it connected correctly and everything should be fine. Hi guys, so I, I hope you liked this episode and what we went through. So the purpose, as again to recap, the sure switch is there to enable us to manage the power fluctuations. In the next episode, we're going to be installing a hyper engineering sure start. The combined of these two devices with our heating, ventilation, air conditioning on this particular compressor, or HVAC as you might hear us um, talk about in other episodes, this is going to allow this compressor to start up at a slower rate. The, the reason for this is twofold. One is that we're looking for longevity with the equipment, so a better, longer lasting um, condenser for us and compressor. And then two, as we install in the next episodes that are going to be coming, a 12 kilowatt naturally, natural gas fed generator, that generator will enable this four ton air conditioner to start up and, and, and run off of that that generator which is typically rated for larger generators so combined we hope that this is going to give longer life to our, our compressor and allow us to have the dual fold benefit of starting up under a generator i hope you'll stick with us this is going to be a great opportunity for everybody to learn and, and after all the hurricanes that we've been seeing coming through the louisiana area this will be something important for everybody and i hope you enjoy this thanks and all the links and the equipment that we reference will be in the comments below and subscribe and we hope to see you on other other episodes thank you